Blatter was followed by his only rival in the presidential election, Prince Ali Bil Al Hussein and UEFA President Michel Platini. Shame and humiliation have been brought on FIFA following the turbulent events as the leading soccer officials have been arrested and face extradition to the US. Blatter addressed the opening of FIFA's 65th Congress, calling on unity to combat corruption within the World Football Federation. Earlier, he assured he was not responsible for the scandal. I know many people hold me ultimately responsible for the actions and reputation of the global football community, whether it's a decision for the hosting of a World Cup or corruption scandal. No. Many international figures, including Blatter himself, have criticised Washington for going beyond its jurisdiction and violating international law in the FIFA case. Russian President Vladimir Putin accused Washington of meddling outside its jurisdiction in an obvious attempt to prevent FIFA head Seb Blatter's re-election. This is an obvious attempt to prevent Mr. Blatter from being re-elected as FIFA president, which is a grave violation of principles of international organisations. Putin also said the US had pressured Blatter and other FIFA officials to strip Russia of its rights to host the 2018 World Cup. It now remains to be seen if Blatter is elected for a fifth term in FIFA, which he has headed since 1998. Almost a third of the regions of Peru continue to be on general strike for a second day in support of protests against the Tia Maria mining project in the province of Islay. In the region of Puno, particularly in the city of Juliaca, most businesses and schools were closed and roads were blocked. This was spontaneously convened. Here we don't have leaders, but all the organizations have emerged so that we go on strike this time and in that manner. Support all our brothers in the province of Isle that are defending their rights and their natural resources and whose products might be the source of food of all the region of Puno. For historians, Peru has a long record of contradictions between agriculture and export-oriented mining. This has caused countless of social conflicts as anger mounts against the state and large corporations and people feel their rights as citizens are not being respected. Social conflicts come down in a way after repression and intervention of the legal mechanisms of the state, but they're not resolved. It simply is like a pressure cooker where you place the conflicts and after a while other circumstances will make them explode again. Zapata says that while Peru has important social movements, these are not reflected in the country's political institutions. As a result, the cycle of social conflicts and repression is likely to continue. Rael Mora, Telesur, Lima. Lawmakers have made no attempt to block the president's decision. This means that after 33 years of unjustly being placed on the list, Cuba will remove the a part of the historic normalization of ties between both nations announced in December. Havana recently hailed Obama's decision. The unjust accusation will be removed. Cuba will be dropped off the terror list and we will be able to appoint and have ambassadors. The Cuban delegation recognized the just decision adopted by President Obama to remove Cuba from the list of states sponsors of international terrorism. U.S. lawmakers were on an official visit to Havana. Cuba's official news agency reported that a U.S. senator leading the delegation, Democrat Tom Udall from New Mexico, said that there was a growing bipartisan support in Congress to lift the more than 50-year-old illegal blockade against Cuba. There's growing bipartisan support in the Senate for all of these uh, bills that I talked about, whether it's dropping agricultural restrictions, whether it's uh, lifting the travel ban, uh, whether it's uh, 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 the internet. Still, many more meetings will have to take place as Cuba insists on the United States end to its illegal occupation of Guantanamo Bay in Cuba and the immediate lifting of the embargo. But for now, the opening of embassies in each other's nation seems a greater reality. Despite the ferocity of the battle waged by the Syrian army against the Islamic State in the city of Palmyra, a source in the Syrian army has confirmed that the country's state defense troops withdrew from Palmyra after helping many people to evacuate. Where was the international community when Mosul fell and churches were destroyed? 
and all the implications of that. Where are they today as the city of Palmyra is attacked? The international community has become a puppet of the West. Syrian news agency Sana reported late Wednesday that popular defense groups had pulled out of Palmyra amid a strong assault by Islamic State group. Sana said the IS was trying to get access to archaeological sites. The large attack carried out daily by the terrorists on our heritage and our history and monuments is barbaric. True, they are targeting Syria, but the fact is they are also targeting the entire human history. Sources from inside Balmera say that the Islamic State has imposed a curfew there. And there are a fear of a massacre for those who haven't been able to leave the city. Hazim Abdullah, Dili Sur, Damascus, Syria. At the moment, the government is focusing on schools and hospitals. The District Education Office has commissioned temporary shelters at many schools designed by the Education Department. Sunday, Our temporary learning center is almost complete. We plan to hold a counseling session for parents on Saturday, and we will be ready to start services on Sunday. Homes for individuals take a back seat and many are building temporary shelters on their own. The situation is especially difficult for farming communities. Yeah. My house is broken and I have nowhere to live, let alone store my possessions. I'm storing my recently harvested wheat in my tent. Elsewhere, people still continue to inhabit dangerous living quarters because they have not received the compensation required to build temporary shelter. The government is doing nothing to demolish my house, and it is difficult to find labor for this work at the moment. The government has promised to build temporary shelters for the nearly 3 million displaced people by the middle of June, but the task is not easy. Basic room to live in can be built in two days, but whether every displaced person gets it depends on if we can get all the materials to the victims in time. Since many of Nepal's villages are not accessible by road, the task could easily take more than a month, more so since Nepal struggles with a shortage of necessary supplies in the wake of the disaster. There is a shortage of zinc sheets in the market, which is why my temporary shelter still lacks a roof. With the first phase of rescue and relief over, Nepal has arrived at the rebuilding phase, which is projected to take at least 5 to 10 years at the moment. Seva Batrai, Telesur, Kathmandu.